Well, guys, thanks for coming. Uh, championship week here at Ohio State, and uh, a very good uh, gathering yesterday, practice yesterday. Uh, we did not do champions this week. We just jumped right into a very uh, good t team, an excellent team, Michigan State, and want to do the best job we can to make sure this team is prepared. So uh, obviously some things we still got to work on, but I don't want to ever take away from a rivalry win, uh, one that was a classic that uh, you know, this team finds a way to win. And... Um, uh, I'm very appreciative as a coach. Uh, there's a very purpose-driven team that they care about each other. If one uh, side of the ball is not playing particularly well, the other side has picked them up over this last two years. And this will be a uh, very stiff challenge for us. Um, excellent, excellent defense and a much improved offense that's scoring a lot of points. So um, I'll answer any questions for you. I asked you yesterday a little bit about this. Um, the idea that you have to play the week after Michigan and the fact that, that you feel like this team is equipped to handle that. Why do you feel so strongly about that? Oh, I, well, the first thing is you feel pretty strong about the leaders on our team. I mean, uh, I didn't feel very strong about them back January and February, and uh, I do. I feel very strong about them now. And uh, it was a very draining, emotional win. Uh, it's almost like that three-hour bus ride home was uh, – or whatever it was, two and some change. It was a very good opportunity to let it all out of you and uh, get back to work. Uh, when was it on Sunday? So I, I, I'm concerned about it, but I, I trust our leaders. And, and now that you had a little bit of time to, to look at Michigan State, what are your dominant impressions of them? Uh, as fine a defense as there is in America. Uh, very good players, excellent scheme, well coached. I have not studied their offense a lot. That's usually on Tuesday. I listen to our coaches. And I just look at statistically what that quarterback and the running back and those guys have done. It's, it's uh, from day one, uh, game one to game 11, there's most approved offense, maybe certainly in the Big Ten, maybe in one of the most approved in America. Front row left, Doug. Urban, is there anything, you guys played a close game with Michigan State last year, obviously. Anything learned from that? Or did, yeah, I learned quite a bit. We, we uh, just, I, I happened to just walk out of the room and, um, they're very good. Uh, we were not very good. You know, that's, I'm not taking anything away from Michigan State because they're, they're excellent. Uh, but uh, we're much better offense than we were a year ago. And, uh, uh, but they're, they're, that, was a, that was a street fight last year, uh, certainly between the tackles. And, and uh, we have to be ready for that. And, and evaluating again, removed from it, the way the defense for Ohio State played on Saturday, I mean, is yeah. it? How much better does it have to be? Yeah, we won't win the game. I mean, uh, you won't win that game uh, this time. Um, yeah, it's just very simple. We have to play much better. What was it most of all that concerned you? With it? Uh, pass defense served to surfaced again and lack of contact on the quarterback. And, and uh, we just had some I mean, guys running open. And that's, you know, uh, that's a combination. If you could say it was one thing, then I'd say it was the one thing. And uh, I trust that we'll get it fixed. I trust these guys will be locked and loaded and have a good week of preparation. Front row middle, Todd. Urban, obviously, you guys want to stay in the moment and keep the focus on this game. How difficult is it to do that when there, there's a lot of outside politicking going on? I think Auburn's athletic director said it'd be a disservice and un-American for a one-loss Auburn team not to be there. How difficult is that for you not to want to jump into the fray and sort of defend your team? For me, yeah. I'll, I'll have a comment on Sunday. I mean, we, we, we play a game, you know. For someone to ask about something after this game, I mean, that's, a, that's cheating my football team. And a, there will be no conversation about what happens after this game until after the game. I mean, we got to you know, go watch the Michigan State's defense and see if we have any comments about something after this game. And so. Front row right, Austin. Season about how you wanted the offense to be 50-50 and run the pass. It seems the last couple of weeks you're getting further away from that. Yeah. Concern, or is it just how, I mean, obviously you're running the ball well. A little concerned. I mean, especially with you see who's coming. I did not anticipate us to run the ball like we did. You know, we had a lot of respect for our rivals' uh, run defense. And uh, if there was some vulnerability shown on film, it was actually in pass defense. But we, uh, Tom and myself, got into a little bit of a rhythm as far as. Uh, uh, some formations and some ways we were, we were running the ball at them. So um, we did, you know, we threw a touchdown pass to Jeff Hireman, but we felt like, I mean, we're, we're, you're getting some big yards per crack. 
and uh, both uh, Carlos and uh, Braxton run the ball at a very high level. So that's the only reason. There was no other reason other than that. How, how important is it to have the, the complement of Carlos between the tackles and what Braxton can do on the perimeter? Yeah. There? Well, Carlos is pretty good on perimeter, too. And then Dontre, uh, you know, Dontre and maybe a Jay Hall, Jordan Hall, we, we, that, that won't happen this week. You know, we're going to have to get some perimeter runs. And that's, uh, if you had to probably, I haven't done this stat yet, I will at the end of the year, but half of our yardage is perimeter runs, too, and not just Braxton. So uh, the, the, this will be that, what you just mentioned, balance. When I consider balance, I mean outside, inside run game, and then obviously short pass and vertical pass. And we have to, this week, we'll have to be very balanced. Would you want 25% in all four? I mean, we're parsing it from 50-50 down to 25. Well, I want a W. <laughs> Front row, Tim. Yeah, uh, Urban, uh, along those lines, uh, have you gotten any word from Big Ten about Dr. Wilson, Marcus Hall, et No, uh, we're still in conversation with them, and, and uh, I know Gene, Gene is. And uh, uh, when I hear something, we'll hear something. And uh, championship quarterbacks, go about it different ways, but they all seem to have, I guess, some similar qualities. What do you see about Braxton Miller that tells you he's a championship caliber style quarterback? Well, the first thing we look at, and I actually learned this from Jeff Tedford when uh, we had, you know, when I was a young coach and, and uh, I wanted to hear from a quarterback coach, what's the first thing you go look for? And number one is competitive spirit. And uh, that's what I see out of Braxton Miller. He's an extreme competitor right now. Uh, I think he's always been a very good competitor. I think he's crossed that threshold. To, he's an extreme, extremely extreme competitor right now. And that's the first thing you look at. The second thing is toughness. He's a tough guy. And you can't play quarterback at this level uh, and with what we expect the quarterback to do without a tough guy. So without question, those are the two uh, characteristics. I've coached a couple championship quarterbacks. And, and uh, competitive spirit and toughness are the first two things you look for. And one other quickie, uh, on their team, number 28, Danico's Allen, or very pronounces it, uh, he seems to show up in a lot of frames. Fast uh, athlete. Talk about what, what he brings to, to their defense. Well, there's a lot of key uh, components. Their middle linebacker is a great player, and uh, you can tell he's the coach on the field. they got a quick twitch defensive end that uh, is their pass rusher. Um, and this guy, uh, uh, the Will linebacker, is an extremely talented, fast athlete that runs down plays. Um, Players always say after the Michigan game that they laid it all out, they didn't have anything left. Are, are your players beat up a little bit? Are they spent from that? I don't think so. I didn't get that feel. I got, uh, you know, they're beat up on the defensive side because they were. Uh, we gave up too many yards. Uh, I think it was a very physical game. But we've played, I think, Iowa, I think a team up north, and I think uh, we, we've had some bruisers because we've turned in that kind of style of offense, which is the kind of offense we want to be. Uh, I think they're sore, and I got to be smart this week what we do. But no, as far as energy and focus, and and like you know, throwing the fact that it's finals week here at Ohio State this week too. I mean, we got some. We got to be really efficient with our time with these guys. Along the same lines of finals week and all the other distractions, if the Big Ten were to come down with something further penalties, would that be a big? How big of a blow would that be? It would be a blow, and. Uh, um, but you know we, we functioned okay. We ran for 400 yards last week, and we got good players. And, and the next guy in, uh, very disappointed and angry that that happened. That's not, it's not us. It's not Ohio State, and, and it's not them. That's the thing that, you know. So we just got to move on, and what happens happens. We we'll fully support the Big Ten, and we're good soldiers, and go and and uh, learn from it. Back row, uh, Bill Livingston. Urban, uh, with all the scrutiny that's going on here. Your past the offseason problems. Do you feel it's a double standard? There's been a case that seems to be worse uh, than anything that happened here in the offseason. Florida State that's been under, underground for so long and has not been close to I haven't really followed any, you know, the, the, do I feel there's a double standard? I don't think so. I really don't. I think people get disappointed when they hear that I don't read, really read much and listen much, and I go to work and I go home. So. Um, I think uh, when you're in a position where your your team is winning games and things are happening, you got to be very, you know, you got to watch uh, watch how your team behaves. You got to make sure that uh, things are in order, and I like to think we do. So. Second row, up middle, Bob. Yeah, Urban, I'm curious. Like you used to always hear coaches say, defense wins big games, and I know college football's changed a lot. 
Did you ever think that was true? And is that? Oh, you yeah. think it's still? You think it's still true with the yeah. offenses the way they yeah, are? Yeah, we've all, I, you know, in 12 years of being a head coach. I want to say we've always had the, the last two years have been, you know, because we're growing. We, we've uh, you know we had some personnel issues and, and new staff and some, you know. But yeah, you look at the, you know, the Florida years that you won national champion. We we're top five in American defense. At Utah, we're always top teams in American defense, and and to to reach the level that Ohio State expects, we need to play better on defense. So absolutely, we believe in that, and we spend a lot of time, devote a lot of resources to our defense. Is that, particularly since Michigan State has such a good defense, does that concern you in this? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Far left, uh, Matt. Last two questions. Um, wondering about uh, Michigan State defensively and Coach D'Antonio. They seem to do a lot of different things and are very aggressive. This, how much of a mental game is this on Braxton and your offense? You know, it's not, it's not real overcomplicated. That's where I think they, they do an excellent job. They, they make everything look alike, and um, uh, they're, they're very well coached as far as gap control, and, and uh, you don't see many big plays against them. I want to say there's been, I don't want to give you the number because it's probably wrong, a very minimal amount of uh, explosive plays against them. And so um, it, it's the the... It's not the, so much the scheme, it's the toughness and the fundamentals of the kids playing that scheme. And that's really like any, you know, someone's going to say, boy, the spread offense is hard to defend. No, it's not. If you have really bad players that don't play very well, it's not that hard to defend. This style of defense, I can imagine there's been many, many people try to copy it. And uh, that's a credit to their coaching staff and their players because they, they, they're at a different level right now. Coach, your Braxton seems to be trending up. Do you think he's a Heisman caliber quarterback? Oh. We're down to the last chance to prove it. Yeah, I think he's got to prove it, and this is a great opportunity for him. I think, uh, you know, I, I know he missed some games. I can't remember how it seems like six years ago that he hurt his knee. Uh, but I, I think he's a Heisman worthy. You know, I can't compare him to the other guys because his stats probably aren't as good. I haven't even looked at that. Uh, but I, I think... You know, I've been around a Heisman Trophy quarterback. I certainly think Braxton's in that conversation. I have no idea. I mean, I have not looked at anything. I'll do that probably next week. Thanks, guys.